Hey, welcome back everyone. Don't worry, it's not the end of the video, it's the beginning of the video. I always do a little bit of pre-assembly, make sure that there's no issues, especially when I'm buying aftermarket parts like this pace setter header for my 2000 Jeep Wrangler uh, 4.0. And I did find some issues, I resolved them. And we're gonna go over how to install this header. It's a little bit different than your average header and what I think of it. Enjoy the video and let me know in the comments what you think. Okay, now that the manifold is off, I want to give you a better look at this header. Here's the company name, Pace Setters. There's the model number if you want to freeze it and write it down. I got them on Amazon for 209. They go from 209 to 259. Now, this is not the standard design of a header for the Jeep 4.0. You notice that there's no curl into it. Um, a lot of them have the curl, but if you read any of the reviews on Amazon or eBay, none of them have good reviews about fitting. They all touch the manifold. So I happen to like this design of the header better. It's like the hooker header. And I thought I'd have a better chance of fitting it. I had no problems with fitment on anything except this front tube right there. My manifold did touch it. I'll show you how I took care of the issue. No banging was needed or anything. Um, and that's what you always hear people using hammers to bend the headers. I didn't have to do anything like that. It was a simple fix. And I, um, again, like I said, I'll show you. I did call Pace Setters. I talked to a nice gentleman and he said he's never had the issue. So maybe whoever assembled this particular header, because they are assembled, you know, they're handmade, not machine made. They didn't um, bend this pipe the right way. And that could be an issue. You can call them up, but that's what they're telling me. I didn't want to send it back. So I just took care of the issue myself. Another issue with this particular header and this one you can't fix. And this one I'm... I don't like as, I don't really like it. This flange is a little bit thinner than other flanges. So you cannot use a stock washer except for here and the outer nuts. What they do is send you this washer and it's an offset washer. So what that means is this thicker part touches the flange and this thinner part touches the manifold. On the top bolts, it's not much of an issue, but there literally is no room on the bottom and to put these in and to line them up is one thing but then to get a torque wrench in there i mean this thing's just a big pain in the butt i wish they just made this flange a little bit thicker and i know it'd probably be a little bit more money but you just get a lot better um fitment i'm i'm assuming but you got to be a little bit more careful because of this bolt and i'm sorry about being long-winded but this is important in my book it tells me to torque this whole header system down to 23 pounds and a manifold 23 pounds their instructions say 18 so i'm gonna guess um i don't think it was a misprint i'm gonna guess because it's offset um you're going 18 pounds because you're not getting a full contact of that face and you're putting a pressure point so they probably don't want to be um have people cracking their manifolds or anything so that's the only thing i can figure out that so i'm gonna take this header off they're telling me to put the copper gasket on this side of the gasket i will do that but i'll shoot i'll show you in a minute i'm also going to be putting copper on the head the cap or gasket on the head also So if you're watching me finger paint still, I just want to show you why I'm doing this. I put a little bit of that on the head and a little bit on the gasket. I put together, these gaskets aren't perfect. The head is not perfect by far. So what I'm doing is I put it together and then I just wipe it down and I'm filling in that edge because the head's so messed up. 
I'm trying to get it to fill in. When I put this header in the manifold on, I want it to seal. So that's just going to give me the best get. Um, that's going to give me the best opportunity not to have a leak. So I got to wipe it down one more time. But you can see right on the edge, it's it's nice and sealed. And when I put this header on, it should sit really good and give me a good seal. So let me keep on going. Okay, so I have that on there right now. Kind of screwed up because I should have probably made this video before because I need to get that manifold on there to tighten in the sequence. There is a special sequence um, to tighten the manifold and header. I'm going to put it in the picture right now. Take a picture of it. Okay, that was for 2000 and above. Okay, so what did I do to the manifold? So you give a view where the manifold is. That is the manifold and that front pipe is where my issue was. I took a Dremel with a grinder and I grind this rib. This front rib right here is my bracket right here is for the power, I'm sorry. The bracket right here is for the power steering pump. This rib is not connected into the manifold. It's more of a brace and I just notched that rib out and just ground it with a Dremel carefully and I did a little bit more because I wanted a little clearance, but that's what I did to solve my issue for fitting this header. I just thought it was better than banging the header. I didn't do anything structural to the manifold. You can see my finger behind it. It's just a rib, and I still got all that rib in here left over, and all that rib. All I did is, you could compare it to the fingernail. I took half my finger, thumb fingernail off, and I ground that, and I'm gonna put this manifold on and start tightening it up in the sequence I'm supposed to. Sorry, this video is all messed up, but it's 30 seven degrees outside. The garage is about 30 seven degrees. I put a heater on, but it just keeps on getting colder and I want this stuff to dry the right way. So let me get onto it. I just want to show you something. Those are the washers I'm talking about right there. The ones on top aren't too hard to put on, but I just want to show you this. Let me see if I get a, a good view. Those are a pain in the ass. See how they're sitting? They have to sit that way or you're going to crack your manifold. Um, still like this header better than all the other ones and I'm still happy that they're made in America. I just wish they made the flange a little bit thicker so we could use the stock washers. But, you know, again, I just think it's a better header. But I want to show you that too right there real quick. You see that? How I'm not sure if that's picking up on the... Oh, uh, no. Okay, all right. Oh, uh, jeez. Let me do it. Uh, 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 right there. See that? That's where it was touching. See that grind mark I made right there? Right there is the best light I can. Uh, right there. That's what I ground out. So, right, oh, that might be a good view. So you can see where I ground it out. Nothing else is touching. I ground a little bit extra, as you can see. Oh, enough of the shaky cam. Let me go tighten this shit up.
So it's the next day. I torqued everything down yesterday, but I did come back today and rechecked all my torques mainly because the bolts underneath here with the extensions are really screwing me up for torques. Close enough, we'll call it a day. This part of the project is done. Um, we are over 400 on the subscribers, which is really cool. So like, share, you know, it helps out the videos. I appreciate it. Talk to you next time and we'll get going on another project.